there is a very real chance that we're going to be able to make the world a better place, particularly for diabetics. Not only did it bind glucose incredibly strongly, it then bound it in a soup of thousands of other molecules. There's nothing really out there, synthetic or biological, that competes on a selectivity level. I do struggle to kind of reflect on what has happened and like actually absorb the enormity of it sometimes. Diabetes is a really major health problem. It affects more than half a billion people worldwide. All types of diabetes are conditions where blood sugar levels are too high. Numbers of people with diabetes are on the increase for type 1 and for type 2. We know that having high blood sugar levels over long periods of time increases risk of diabetes complications. So this includes problems with your eyes, problems with your heart and circulatory system, problems with your feet such as foot ulcers. And Diabetes, I think, is the seventh leading cause of illness and, and, and disability. Glucose is the number one blood test on planet Earth. Knowing how much is in your blood is incredibly useful. Glucose is very important, very common, and absolutely central to potential medical applications. It's critical to all life that we understand glucose concentration, whether that's in growing cells, in cell culture, or managing diabetes in diabetic patients. It's routine now for diabetics to monitor their glucose. It's so important to be able to monitor glucose continuously. We first started studying glucose binding a long time ago, back in the 1990s, in fact. Our glucose binding molecules have all been based on what we call the temple architecture. And what this involves is making a cage with a roof and a floor and then pillars separating them. At one point, a Chinese postdoc came into the group. He came up with a design for binding glucose. It was really very simple. And I wasn't at all sure it would work, but actually it did. It worked quite well. And this obviously got us thinking, though, could this be useful early on as a, as a sensor to monitor glucose levels in the blood? It was easy to make. It bound glucose within the right range, but it had few issues, which we knew of. So we were always trying to think of new receptors that we could make that would overcome these problems. And at that point, we decided that it might be a good idea to have a company, and so we created this company, Xylo. Xylo was created fundamentally to try to commercialise the technology that Harry had been working on during his PhD. Harry was very keen to be an entrepreneur, knew, of course, all about this receptor that we had some hope for, and said, right, I'm going to make it work. Harry's a great optimist. I wasn't at all sure it was going to work. Of course, what they needed to do was to turn this first receptor into a sensor. There are many universities that do research, but not many that are good at commercialization. And one of our problems spinning out the company was where do we spin it out to? There was no lab space in the city in 2014. And in 2015, a year after incorporating Xylo, we incorporated the first of the Science Creates entities to build Bristol's first deep technologies incubator for our own startup. It was so impressive seeing all these young, really enthusiastic entrepreneurial people pulling together, working really hard, really late to create something absolutely amazing. All of a sudden we had ample lab space, fume hoods so we could do organic chemistry, and it enabled us to expand the R&D team with some amazingly talented scientists, many of whom studied at the university and did PhDs at the university. This allowed us to solve some very hard scientific problems. It worked very well in water, but when we put it into blood, it didn't work at all. And it made us realise that we were taking on an even more difficult problem than we'd realised because you have to make something which not only binds glucose and binds glucose in preference to other carbohydrates, but doesn't bind anything else at all because there's lots of other stuff in blood. Fundamentally, the challenge of recognising glucose in complex biological mixtures, I've always likened to being worse than finding a needle in a haystack. It's like finding a needle in a pile of needles. We found problems with it, which then informed the design of the next system. All the way through this work, we've been using a particular pillar, which was easy to work with and 
really quite well known, in fact, in other areas of supermolecular chemistry. But we realized that it was a little bit too short. So we were looking for an alternative pair that was just maybe one bond longer. Then in 2015, came up with a new design that really made all the difference. We call it GLUHUT, which is short for glucose binding hexaurea temple. It's got six urea groups in it. And of course, it conforms to our original temple architecture, which we've been working with for so long. When that was put into new systems on the computer, it really did look very promising indeed. It was quite a eureka moment, in fact, when that happened, because you could see the glucose going inside the cavity in the computer and that the interactions and the size and everything was absolutely perfect pretty well. So it uses size and shape as part of the recognition feature, and it matches that with pairing it with the, the ideal molecular complement for glucose. And you can think of this as like magnets, north and south pole of magnets. Where there's a south region on glucose, you pair that with a north region on the glucose binding molecule. We were very excited about the design of the hexaurea system. On paper, it looked very, very exciting, but it was actually extremely hard to make. It was then the job of another PhD student in the group Rob Tromans, who was tasked with a very, very hard job of, of making this system. I showed it to Rob and I said, I really think you should make this. He didn't do very much for a couple of months. And I kept on saying to him, Rob, I really do think you should make this. We eventually started out in about, it took about eight months and he eventually produced the molecule. And of course we then put it in an NMR tube and we ran the spectrum and then we started adding glucose to it. And this really was a great moment. I was actually in a dark room in the basement of the chemistry department with the 600 megahertz spectrometer that they've got there. So I essentially thought I'd got my mass wrong at one point because I added some glucose, it changed instantly, and then I added more glucose and it didn't change again. But then when I repeated the experiment and it happened again, I knew that essentially what I had was a very strong glucose binder here. What's really different about our specific glucose binding molecule is that it's extremely selective for glucose, it's extremely stable, and it binds glucose really, really strongly. The previous generation that Xyla were using, that struggled with things like uric acid, which meant it didn't work in blood, basically, whereas this thing didn't care. Not only did it bind glucose incredibly strongly, it then bound it in a soup of thousands of other molecules. There's nothing really out there, synthetic or biological, that competes on a selectivity level, binding glucose compared to other carbohydrates found in nature. A scientific breakthrough by a graduate at the University of Bristol could transform the lives of millions of diabetics. It's just been sold for £623 million to the pharmaceutical multinational Novo Nordisk. So the acquisition was, quite frankly, a, a big shock. It was an enormous amount to take in what it meant for the city of Bristol, what it meant for the university, what it meant for me personally. It was obviously a very surreal moment when I realised that this was actually real and we were going to be acquired. The week later, we were back in the lab making molecules and doing the collaboration. You know, there's hardly a moment's rest before things were back to normal. I remember one of the times I tried to tell my mum what happened, and I think that's when it really grounded it for me. She had no idea what was going on, but I tried to explain it, and then I think it was when I began to explain it in very simple terms to her, the gravity of the situation and what was going on. In August 2022, we received a strategic investment from a medical device company, which has really been the acceleration we need to take this molecule towards a fully functioning medical device in a short space of time. Um, what we're doing right now is taking that molecule and equipping it with a way to report glucose binding to it such that it can be transduced by a sensor and give accurate stable glucose readings in, in people. And this was let us live the dream of being able to realise the full potential of that amazing discovery. So Bristol's a very different place to when we first decided to spin out Xylo in 2014. In 2014 Bristol was 20th in the spin out rankings and now it's 6th and many of the companies are members of the Science Creates ecosystem. So across these two incubators, today there are over 350 jobs that, it, that support, spanning everything from quantum technologies all the way through to biotech companies. We hope that 
The story of Xylo, Carbon Metrics and Science Creates is inspiring to future innovators and makes them feel that they could do it as well. It is very exciting to see how something which started off on my computer was then sort of put together in my lab and tested and then taken forward really looks like it could possibly change the world and it's a very, very pleasing feeling.